was a really good opportunity for him to step into a bigger marketplace, work with more money, bigger canvas, that kind of thing. Um, and you're right, the partners on this are very interesting. We have um, Ari Aster, who had the double whammy of uh, Hereditary and Midsummer, And we have uh, Lars Knudsen, Knudsen um, who are part of the parts and labor team, which is really interesting. So they've done everything from, you know, like Old Joy to Mike Mills Beginners to American Honey. Uh, they also, he also was part of Hereditary and Midsummer. But this is a guy who's, who's very entrenched in the American indie scene mm -hmm. as well. So it's a really, really interesting partnership um, between a huge South Korean uh, studio, CJ Entertainment's huge there, and uh, you know, two American indie guys um, to bring this you know, offbeat cult South Korean film to American audiences. So I reintroduced myself to the trailer because 2003 felt, feels like ages ago. Um, and I was sort of like looking at the material and thinking, how is he gonna rework it? What's, how, how does it fit within a contemporary setting? Obviously it's, it's a maddening, crazy idea, but then I was thinking of Ari's film, Midsummer, and it's about people possessing your own body and, and sort of, um, those polar opposites there's like that that fight between not good versus evil but those who are possessed and those are who are trying to like unplug the system um so i thought that was a really curious um choice as as producing partners um on a personal level are you sort of like fed up with with english remakes of of foreign titles that does do they do anything for you I think it's a case by case basis. Uh, I'm not thrilled when it's like an acclaimed film that won, you know, festival laurels and things like this. And then the knee jerk reaction is to make an English remake. I think in this case, you know, Save the Green Planet is, um, it's a cult movie. Um, I'm sure it has people who really love the film, but I also think it's, you know, it's, uh, 17 years since it was released mm -hmm. um i think there's probably an opportunity to to make the material you know connect with the current moment the current zeitgeist with with everything that's happening um and if the filmmaker himself is making it uh and he feels that he you know can go through this material again and and do some things differently and try some things why not you know I'll, i'm willing you know um, but again, like, Save the Green Planet's not a personal film to me. It, it, uh, I haven't seen it, so I'm pretty open. I'm, I, I, I think the, the Ari Aster's involvement and, and Lars uh, Nets and are the other elements, too, that make me curious about what they're going to cook up. That's where, that's where I agree with you, and um, I'm always, like, itsy about, you know, Force Maj like Ruben's film that was remade. I was like, ah, oh, do I want to see that? Finally, I wasn't impressed too much by that material. And then, you know, back in the day when, when they mentioned that Caché from Haneke was going to get a remake or Tony Erdman, I'm like, those things just infuriate me. But uh, in this case, I'll, I'll agree with you. It's the, the producing team that, that's coming aboard and sort of like shepherding the project stateside. Um, it might make for uh, an interesting uh, revamp. Hi, I'm Eric Lavallee. I'm editor-in-chief and site owner for IonCinema.com, and this is Kevin Jaggernaut, contributing writer for The Playlist. And together we are Indie Sponge.